Hello, everyone. My name is Riley Daverin, and I'm a mentor with UTSA's Graduate Mentorship Program and a member of the Professional Communications Team. My teammates and I have compiled tips and resources in this presentation to help guide graduate students to perform well in interviews. In addition to myself, my teammates Isaiah, Veronica, and Gunjan helped create this presentation. I'd like to briefly discuss the importance of developing professional communication skills as graduate students. Professional communication refers to the skills necessary to communicate effectively within professional settings, whether that be school, work, or other professional environments. Developing these skills allows for both professional and personal growth, especially the ability to build effective interpersonal relationships, to stand out in a professional interview, and to boost morale, engagement, productivity, and overall satisfaction amongst coworkers or peers. Within the subset of professional communication, this presentation will focus specifically on preparing for professional interviews. So again, this presentation is designed to help you effectively prepare, prepare and perform in a professional interview. As we move forward in our professional careers following graduation, interviews will become commonplace. Interviewers will evaluate your appearance, body language, attitude, or communication skills, sincerity, and more to identify if you are the right person for the job or school program. Because of this, we'd want you to be confident in each of these areas. The more you prepare for an interview, the more comfortable you will be. And the goal of this presentation is to help you with that. Preparation for an interview is key. In order to prepare, you'll need to both study and practice. We'll discuss the company or organization or program, the job or position description, and potential interview questions. We'll also discuss how to properly practice for an interview. First and foremost, you'll need to study yourself. This includes identifying your strengths and weaknesses, your personality type, life experiences, or skill sets. You can use these personal aspects to your advantage. This will help build confidence and ensure you don't oversell or undersell yourself and your accomplishments. If you've faced adversity or gaps in your education or professional journey, embrace them and express how they have shaped you into who you are today. However, be mindful that there is a fine line between confidence and cockiness. Be modest, be relatable. You'll also need to study the company, organization, or program, and job or position description. In order to do this, you'll need to conduct lots of research. The UTSA Library has two resources that can assist in this process. Both of these resources are research guides. The first of which, which we'll take a look at, is entitled Due Diligence Before Job Interview. And this research guide is aimed at helping you prepare for your interview by conducting research on the organization for which you're applying. So, this screen and there are uh, that will be up to you. Just kind of do some first and then, but what's so a distinct question. Um, okay, sorry about that with the sound. Um, all right, so on this page, there are several tabs that will be of use to you. Um, so specifically under the Getting Started tab, you want to come down to this section entitled Questions to Answer. And there are specific questions organized into categories that you should be able to answer to ensure that you've properly researched um, and have enough information about the company or organization or program. So you'll wanna be able to identify what the organization or company does, how big it is, what is its revenue or budget, who are the competitors, 
what industry it's in, and what is the industry outlook. And then you should also be able to answer some questions within this organization. So who works there? Is there anyone you know? Are there any facts you can find about them? And then most importantly for yourself, um, you really want to be aware of the culture of the company or organization. Um, and you can also think about things like what the interviewing process is like and what employees think about their organization. And then each of these tabs provides a couple databases to help you find um, information and do research about the company. So there's some news ones that will help you understand kind of what's happening currently. And then there are databases that have distinct reports uh, or other documents and information about companies. You can check that out. There's a section for nonprofits and one for government agencies. And then there's also two you can use to find more information about the people at the company or organization, um, LinkedIn, and then Capital IQ is given to us through UTSA. And then there's also a couple of sources on finding more information about the culture at the company or organization. Common, I think that's open access. And then the rest of these you can access through UTSA. So they've organized this really nicely to help you be able to answer those questions. Be able to find any information about your company or organization within these databases, you'll still wanna keep these questions in mind. All right, and the second um, research guide that UTSA Library provides for us is called Careers. Um, and if you're for information about specific careers, what might be best for you, this is a good place. But they also have a specific tab on interviews. Um, and there's two key resources here in which you can get lots of insights about how to interview. And then they've also provided some books for you as well about interviewing. So both of those might be beneficial to check out. And then um, you should also familiarize yourself with the companies or organizations or programs website. Um, their website will provide lots of useful information. So again, if you couldn't find anything about your company, check their website for sure. And this same process can be applied to choosing a school for future degrees. So kind of same things you'll want to consider. You'll want to learn the school environment. And then you can consider questions like their graduation rate, how interactive are the professors and student access, will my interest or goals be supporting their program, et cetera, to kind of guide your, your research process there. And again, both of those QR codes to access those research guides are right here on this screen. You'll also need to study a variety of questions and question styles. So there are lots of different questions that you might be thrown in an interview. The first place you'll want to start is with more common job interview questions and how to answer them. Um, so we've linked this article here from the Harvard Business Review, and there's a QR code right there to access it. And this article covers some general interview questions that are typically asked and a detailed description of what interviewers might be seeking from your answer. Um, and if you just do a simple Google search of common interview questions, you'll find other articles from credible sources that will pop up as well. And then you'll also want to search for common questions related to your field. This will allow you to prepare answers that show your awareness of the field and specific expectations that might arise. And lastly, you should come with questions for the interviewer to show your interests, like what their processes are for performance evaluations, what is their ideal candidate? What are their expectations? Things like that. And this is important because when you prepare questions for interviewers, you display an active interest in the company and job role. Not only do the right questions give you a sense of future opportunities and the culture of the company, but this back and forth exchange promotes a positive dialogue between you and the interviewer that could ultimately help you land the job. So again, like we've mentioned, you'll wanna practice a variety of questions and the questions that you might be given in interviews could be general, situational, behavioral, maybe even technical, depending on your industry. 
Um, but research shows that the most common type of interview questions are behavior-based questions. So we're gonna focus on those. Behavior-based questions allow for reflection on your past experiences. And this is assumed to be the most accurate predictor of future performances. So obviously it's gonna be important to prepare for those. Um, to help you kind of identify whether a question is behavior-based or not, the most common starts to these questions or give me an example of, or tell me about a time when. So those types of openings will help indicate that this is that type of question. Um, and we're gonna discuss the STAR method. The STAR method is one of the best formulas for effectively answering these questions. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. This format guides you to tell a complete and coherent story while getting to the point quickly. Situation refers to an event, project, or challenge face. Task refers to your responsibilities or assignments for the situation. Action refers to the steps or procedure taken to relieve or rectify the situation. Result refers to the outcome of the actions taken. So to kind of demonstrate how this method should be used, um, I'd like us to consider an example. So let's say an interviewer is asking about a semester that you had a lower GPA. So you'll need to describe the situation first. So you might say, I entered my sophomore year with a low GPA. I'd always done well in school, but I didn't handle the transition to college well. So then you'll have to describe the task. We're going down to T. I knew that if I wanted to succeed, I had to develop better study, study habits and manage my time better. So then you wanna describe the action, what did you do? So you may have created a calendar and marked the due dates for all of your assignments and tasks and set aside certain hours each day for studying, allowing more for peak times like midterms or finals. And you may have made up your mind not to change the plan until after the first semester grades so you could give it a chance to work. And then you'll wanna really highlight the result. My grades improved immediately. I used this system for the whole year and earned a 3.2 while still having time for other activities. My GPA has been strong ever since. So as evidenced in that example, the STAR method can help you answer tough questions clearly and concisely. So you should definitely practice using this method as you prepare for your interview. Now that you've studied and prepared, it's time to practice. So you can practice for an interview with live support, like mock interviews with friends, family, or peers, maybe even the mirror or recording. This can help you gain feedback and to show how others might perceive you. You can also access the UTSA Career Center resources to help you practice. So we've highlighted a couple here, um, and this QR code will bring you to the UTSA Career Center. So the first of which is their mock interview guide. And this is um, a Word doc packet, essentially. And um, it's an awesome resource that encompasses all areas of preparation for an interview. It's very thorough. The packet includes worksheets that will guide you in identifying your per personal strengths and weaknesses, as well as direction for researching your company of interest. This document also provides more different detailed information on the different styles of interviewing and how to prepare your answers for such techniques. And then most importantly, it talks about how to schedule and prepare for a mock interview. So through the UTSA Career Center, you can set up an interview and it will be conducted just like a formal interview. So you'll show up and um, employees at the UTSA Career Center will interview you. So it talks about how to prepare for that, you know, what to expect, how you'll be evaluated. Um, but this is really beneficial and will definitely help you practice. And then the other really important UTSA Career Center resource we've linked here is Interview Stream. Um, and UTSA students may use Interview Stream to sharpen their interview skills by practicing responses to simulated interview questions. You can log in with your UTSA account and there's a prepare um, section on this webpage and it will just kind of throw you simulated interview questions and you'll have to practice responding to them. And then there's also an option to record yourself and evaluate your recording of those responses. And that's really beneficial as well. 
And then UTSA also provides access to various LinkedIn learning classes. Um, there are three linked here that pertain specifically to interviewing, but there's lots more. And you can log into LinkedIn Learning with your UTSA login. Um, but some of these master or some of these classes include interviewing masterclass, expert tips for mastering common interview questions, and mastering common interview questions. And like I said, there's lots more, but these are very beneficial as well. All right, we've discussed all that you should do before the interview. Now let's consider what to do during and after the interview. On the day of the interview, be mindful of a few things. Be intentional about your attire. Make sure you're familiar with the dress code and plan your outfit accordingly. Come prepared with copies of your resume and the notebook and pen to take notes. Plan to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early to ensure you're on time and appear responsible. Treat everyone, whether that be others that belong to the company, organization, or program, or other candidates with respect. Your interviewer may ask their opinion of you. And then remember the little things to make a great first impression. Don't forget to smile. During the interview, you wanna ensure that you're remaining optimistic. Your tone and attitude should convey that you want to be there. Maintain positive body language because your posture can convey confidence and engagement. Focus on relating your skills, accomplishments, and qualifications to the needs of the company. Use clear and direct language so you're understood. And really avoid speaking negatively about previous employers. This can definitely reflect poorly on you. After the interview, start with evaluating your performance. Did any questions stump you? Consider how you can improve your answers for the next interview. Then think about what you learned about the position and employer and assess whether these will meet your priorities and goals. Send a thank you note or email to the interviewer. Thank you notes should be short, concise, and to the point. Express gratitude for the opportunity to interview and mention the aspects of the interview that were of particular interest to you. Send a follow-up email and inquire about results if you've not heard from the interviewer after a few business days. Since virtual interviews have become increasingly popular, especially since COVID, we did just wanna take a moment to talk about a couple things to do that are specific to virtual interviewers. So you should make sure that your background is clear and that you don't have a lot of things on the wall behind you. Um, that can look unprofessional and distracting. You wanna set up in a well-lit room so the interviewer can see you well. You wanna look at the camera. This will look like you're looking the interviewer in the eyes and maintaining eye contact. You wanna make sure that you're still dressing properly for the interview. Interviewers may ask you to stand up and you don't wanna be caught in your pajama pants. <laughs> Uh, maintain positive body language, even on camera, you can still see those things. And always, always, always check your technology. Zoom and other softwares generally allow you to check your sound and video connection. So make sure that you do both. Let's review a few don'ts for interviewing. Do not go to an interview without any background information about the company, organization or program and position. Do not answer no when asked if you have any questions. Ooh, I mean, I did not. Do not memorize a script, just be confident and go with the flow. And lastly, do not go to an interview unprepared and having not practiced. Overall, in preparation for any interview, simply be yourself as this will allow you to be most comfortable. If you have to fake your enthusiasm for the job or the program, reconsider if it is right for you. Remember, don't rush the process, the right job or position. And here are a final few resources from credible sources that might be helpful to help you prepare for your interview. Um, and we have the QR codes here so you can access these. But there's an article from the Wall Street Journal that lists a couple of tips most of which we've already gone over, but there's definitely more information there. There's one from Indeed about how to make a great impression in a job interview that focuses more on what to do during the interview. And then an article from Monster, which again are interview tips, and then 10 ways to improve interview performance. 
So that talks more about what to do after your interview and how to prepare for the next one. Now I'd like to close with a TED talk. Many of us are likely new to our field or career. It's easy to become intimidated and overwhelmed. This TED talk is particularly beneficial to up and coming professionals as it highlights the importance of focusing on your skills as opposed to experience in an interview. So let's watch and let me share my computer sound so you can hear it. All right, and that's all we have for you. Thank you so much, and we hope this has been helpful. Good luck.